Because we know people who should be successful, but what? They're not successful. Why? So that's his why buy. But what is he afraid of? My personal style of education, but still entertain them, bring them along with stories, right? You can't wait to tell your colleague. You can't wait to go to work and tell somebody. And you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. So what happened? If you haven't seen my TV show, you should get cable. That's what we need to do. From doing a TV show to doing corporate events, I've been so lucky to connect with many passionate entrepreneurs worldwide. What I've learned from a business perspective, because this is the formula for success, no matter who you talk to, attitude will drive your behavior. Would you agree? and your behavior will drive your consequences every single time. Right, we got the concept. Okay, we got the concept. We got, we got the equipment, right? We got the brand, you guys got that. And then again, we got the content that we create. That's the easy part. This is the big one, the big C, which is the commitment. What should you do? That's right, all right. 10 Xers, do not fail me, true test. Here it comes. There's skill, and then there's will. Listen to what I'm saying. There is skill, and then there is will. And here's the interesting thing. I know a lot of people who have a lot of skill, but have no what? Will, right? You ever look at somebody who's successful, and you say, why them, why not you? Yes, okay, that's me too. You have more control, but your costs are also gonna be what? Higher. Now, here's where some of the magic is starting to kick in. You can talk to any CEO in the B2B business, any CEO. You walk into his office and they only care about three things. People too. Yeah, he with the suit, put it up. There you go. I hope you can see this. I'll try to draw big. Let's pretend for a moment that I had seven territories. You remember I wrote that out? Yes or no? Boom, territory two, territory three, all the way to territory number one, seven. So now I've segmented my market. So content is going to start being created by machines. And I'm telling you right now that those people, you guys, the content creators that connect with people are the ones that are going to win. Some people think, well, it won't work for my industry. Really? It'll work for any industry. Trust me. The majority of the time when we're looking to fix something, repair something, or learn something, where do we go? YouTube. We don't even want to read anymore. We go to YouTube. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. When you're doing your thing, beautiful things begin to happen. It's like the law of attraction kicks in. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're in line with the universe. Everything works. And when you do your thing, everybody gets an automatic MBA, which stands for what? Mega bank account money. Are you with me? So we don't want to do a thing. We want to do a what? Beautiful. Put it all together for Victor Antonio. Here we go. All right, there we go. I'm not here to mess around. You ready to learn? Yes or no? That's how it works in today's market. Whether it's B2B or B2C, you see the similar pattern. How do you just, you know, in other words, say you've got to start doing these things, pushing them, but also encouraging them. Oh, look at this. This work is, dude, this is, this is like so interactive with audience. Can you imagine this with your customers? Check this out. Now, what does all this have to do with selling? It has everything to do with selling. All right, man. 
Hey, welcome everybody to a new, can I say a new season of Sales After Dark. Happy New Year to all you guys out there, man. So thank you for joining me. Uh, let me see, we got some comments coming in. Let me just go through that real quick. My man, of course, Chris Stone. Uh, if you love that intro and all the video stuff I do as far as the editing, that's the guy that does it, man. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we got Ted Candy says, morning, Vic. All the best, best wishes in 2022. Right back at you. Where you at, Ted? Let me know where you're at. If it's morning, I know you're on the other side of the world. My girl, Mia Knox, we've been separated for so long. But anyway, Mia, always glad to see you. Thank you for joining me again. Arvid, man, I got your email today, man, so thank you very much. I'm glad you bought the book. Glad you applied some of the tactics. Um, what we talk about today is going to be, you know, some of the stuff you read in the book. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. And there he is, the value merchant man himself, Inkle. John, what's happening? Hey, man, congrats on the book launch. Super excited about this book, man. Uh, like I said, it's a very tactical book, so let me know what you think. And there's my, of course, this dude right here, man. This guy is an awesome dude, by the way. Good evening, Victor. I can't stay. I have to fix my car with Mr. Yeep. Sorry to hear that, man. Give him a high for me, man. Appreciate it. Chris Herrick says, welcome to 2022. Glad to be back learning from Sales After Dark. Good to be back. I kind of took last year off, you know what I mean? I kind of really did a few Sales After Darks. And uh, I'll, I'll explain in another Sales After Dark series why I took last year off. And But, you know, I'm back. Got some great new content coming this year. Uh, this uh, Mastering the Upsell is part of it. Got some new books in the works, some new materials, some new content on the Sales Velocity Academy. Super excited. Uh, Rodriguez J. No Z. Just that, man. Happy New Year. Right back at you, man. Thank you for joining me. And there he is, JBM himself, man. Oh, man, get the book. I want to see. I saw you opening a bunch of books. Again, follow this guy on Instagram, especially. I think you unboxed about maybe four or five books on your Instagram channel. Uh, by the way, you got that tech-powered sales, man. I think that's you're going to love that book, man. So uh, love to hear what you can think. Vaya Borico, Steven Jimenez. ¿Cómo está, hermano? ¿Todo bien? Espero que esto esté bien. Tell me if you're in Puerto Rico or... New Jersey, New York, uh, you know, wherever you're at. CF is back in the house. Happy New Year. Let's do it. What is what is supposed to do? Let's, do? let's do the do, right? Let's simply do the do. Jennifer Cortez, she's back. Jennifer, what's happening? So anyway, uh, I'm going to jump into uh, a part of the book. Again, you guys know I released a book, so no secret. I'm, I'm going to really be doing uh, the next, I think, four or five, depending on what it takes. I'm going to go through Mastering the Upsell. Uh, and I'm going to go through the book. I'll show you what content I'm going through today, the part about upselling mindset. Uh, I'm also excited about my new book that'll be out in, I think we're going we're to put it out probably April or May, but it's called The Big Deal Mindset. And that one is a totally different approach to mindset. And I think you guys are going to like it. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll, when I do another Sales After Dark, I'll explain why I didn't go live last year, a lot of stuff I was doing or not doing and then how the big deal mindset came about. I might even share with you my roadmap for the next two to three years, just so you see how I think and how I plan my, my journey through life. So I think you'll like it. Uh, Gerald Buckley, much love to you and yours, Victor. Thank you very much, man, Gerald. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for joining us. But anyway, let's get into this. I'm going to spend only about maybe 15 minutes on this. And again, this is part of the book. And as I'm going through the content, um, you know, I'll highlight where it fits in the book. So here's kind of the table of content in the book. And so I'm focusing in on chapter five today. And let me go full screen on that so you guys can see it. And you guys, again, can see the full content of what's in the book. And again, a lot of great stuff in the book. I think you're going to enjoy it when you read through it. But let's talk about the upselling mindset. Now, I talked about previously, I gently me mentioned that, you know, there's inbound marketing where we try to attract people into our funnel, right? That's one way of uh, selling, getting new clients. The second is outbound, right? Cold calling, email cold calling, so forth and so on. The third option is to really go back and upsell to your existing customer base. That's what mastering the upsell is all about. It's how do we go back and get more business from our existing customers? And if you think about it, many companies, many people don't even have upselling as part of their process. There's some, like I said, uh, one of the part chapters in here, I think it's chapter five, I talk about decision fatigue. That right there is the gem in terms of including it as part of process, uh, as part of your upselling process. But anyway, let me jump into this mindset because before you get into why you should do the upselling, you need to have the right frame of mind. So that's what I want to talk about today. What is the right frame of mind? Now, 
I've mentioned this in the past, but let's do it one more time because it's important. There's only four ways to grow your business. Four. Well, that's it. No mas, no menos. Four. That's it. Uh, the first one is to go out and gain new clients, right? So this is client acquisition. And would you agree that acquiring new clients can be very tough sometimes? But that's strategy number one. Strategy number two is retention. And retention is obviously holding on to your existing customers, right? So you're holding on to your existing customers. So you can go out, get new customers, retain existing customers. One study showed, and I talk about this in the book, that if you can improve your retention by 5%, that could be almost like a 90% increase in your profit margin. Seems like a big number, but if you think about it, if you're holding on to existing customers, they're not going somewhere else, your cost of sales is almost zero. So again, it's all pure profit. The third strategy, which is what the book is about, is right here is how do you grow your business? In other words, how do you grow your existing client? Now this could be upselling, it could also be cross-selling, right? So we'll talk about that. And as I mentioned in the book, based on one marketing study, if you can just focus on this strategy alone, you can improve your sales by up to 30%. Think about it, up to 30% just by using that strategy. Number four, and that is reactivate. Reactivate simply means people who haven't bought, let's say in the last six months, last 12 months, let's go back and see if we can sell them something. Now, when you look at this matrix, something should pop out right at you. Something should have become readily apparent, but let me highlight for you in case you're missing it. Notice that these are four ways to grow your business. This strategy right here is the only one that requires you to go out and get new customers. The other three strategies are all about how do we sell more to our existing customer base. Now imagine if in your business, in your company, you focus just on that going after existing customers. Whether you're trying to hold on to them, trying to get them back in the fold to buy more. By the way, this is a topic that I'll be exploring later on this year. How do we reactivate people? How do we get them to buy again? What are some different strategies that we can use to get them to buy more? And then here, which is where mastering the upsell comes in, is how do you grow your existing business? Now, why am I showing you this? Because I want you to be motivated, fired up to realize that these three windows right here, it's all about your existing business, your existing customer base. Now, if you're just starting out, I understand, you're right here, but eventually, you're gonna play in these three windows. Now, put this in the chat. How many folks actually have a retention strategy? How many of you guys actually have a reactivation strategy? Get them to start buying again when they stop buying for a given period of time. And third is how many of you really have an upselling process within your sales process. The majority of people I talk to, more than nine out of 10, don't have an upselling process. And I'm saying to you, I am highlighting, putting an emphasis, big exclamation point, that if you can work on this strategy alone, you're gonna see a change in your sales. And again, think about it. There's no cost of sales. There is zero cost of sales. So let's focus on this strategy. So again, I want you to have the right mindset. But let me convince you even more, if you're still not convinced, then let me still convince you. Let me ask you a question, what's more believable? Let's go through this real quick. What do you think is more believable? You can go out and find new clients or get existing client base to buy more. Which one do you think is easier? I would say that going after what? Existing client base is that much easier for you. Which is more believable? Easier access to new clients or existing ones. Oh, this right here, easier access. Let's highlight this one. This is important because think about it. You already have a relationship with the customers. You've already built, I would assume, some credibility. You have a relationship, there's some trust. The ability to access people, in other words, set up a meeting, set up a Zoom call, whatever it may be, is so much easier when you're working with your existing customer base. That's another reason why this strategy makes so much sense. Third, let's go back again. Sales cycle will be shorter with a new client or will it be shorter with an existing client? So now, if we wanna have a, a shorter sales cycle, let's go after existing customer base. So again, 
Let's think about the cost of this. Let's think about time management. If I'm going after a new customer, typically it'll take me, depending on your business, a month, two months, maybe three months to pull somebody in and actually close a deal. But when you're dealing with an existing customer, you have the contact, you have access to them, that means your sales cycle is gonna be what? Shorter. Now remember the sales velocity equation. The sales velocity equation is sales velocity is equal to, let me go big screen on this for you, is equal to the number of opportunities, right? Deals in your pipeline, I'm gonna try to write small here, multiplied by the average deal size, multiplied by the close rate or percentage, but divided by your sales cycle. What does that mean? That if your sales cycle, if your sales cycle is shorter, your sales velocity goes up. If the denominator goes down, this goes up. So if we can shorten the sales cycle, we can increase our sales velocity. That's where the power of upselling lies. So it's not, it's not just upselling and selling more to a client, it's how do you sell more faster? Last bullet point for you, go full screen, and that is, what's more believable? Hitting your quota by acquiring new clients or hitting quota by selling to your existing clients? The answer is too obvious that I don't even talk about it. In other words, these are all the reasons why upselling is a powerful strategy. It'll save you time, it'll save you money, it'll save you frustration by accessing clients quicker. But if you know that you can upsell to existing customers, the probability or the chances of you hitting your quota increase. There was a study this, a few years ago that came out by the, uh, I think it's uh, CSO or CSI, Chief Sales Insider, something like that. Anyway. The company basically highlighted, highlighted that about almost 58, 59% of salespeople don't hit their quota, do not achieve quota. Now that number changes every year, so I don't know what the latest is. But let's say that six out of 10 don't hit their quota. But what if you can use upselling just to ensure that you can hit your number, and this is the reason why. These are the reasons why you can be more effective when it comes to upselling. So my question to you is, as we move on, by the way, there's the book, as a reminder, go get the book. And the, if you're asking, said, Victor, are you really pushing your book? And the answer is yes, because I want you to get the book. I really believe the book is going to help you. So now, that's all I have to say for today. I just wanted to cover what was in that chapter, and I'll take any of your questions right now. But I really believe that if you want to kind of get ahead, it's almost like a hack. This is all, I guess upselling could be considered like a sales hack. If you can figure out how to include upselling as part of your process, using different strategies, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna increase your sales velocity because again, your sales cycle will shorten. The number of opportunities, again, you don't have to worry about getting new clients, just go back to your existing customers. So I'll take any questions, and again, it feels good to be back on Sales After Dark, so let me see who is on here, and I'll just pop them up on the screen, and I'm gonna open it up to you. Let me see, where we're, I'm going back up because I skipped a few people. Is it available on Audible? No, no, Khalil. Not yet, Khalil. I think I got that right. It is not available on audio. People always ask me to do on audio. Uh, I hate the sound of my own voice. And I also have ADHD, so it's hard for me to sit in front of a microphone and record one. But I might do it this time around. I don't know. We'll see. How many people actually would like it on Audible? Give me a one if you'd like it on Audible. Uh, Suram. Rob, what's happening? I wish you all the Vic victorious 2022. Thank you, man. Right back at you. Thank you. Gitsy, you got to love the name. Chilena Mindset. Gitsy, hey, got a Chilena Mindset. I love it, man. Uh, Jay, this year we will focus on upselling. I'll order the book now. Good for you, Jay. Uh, and go get that car fixed. We have no retention or reactivation strategy. I'm telling you, just focusing on these strategies. Again, Everybody talks about prospecting, which I think is great. Obviously, we need to prospect, go out and get a new business. But it's amazing, as I talked about in the last stream, is that we have acres of diamonds, which means opportunities all, all around us, which are our existing customers. So why not go after their business? Am I the only one thinking this way? Anyway, uh, LinkedIn user, I agree with Victor through prospecting is essential, is, is essential and necessary for any business that wants to grow and depend less on existing customers. You got to do them both. It's not one or the other. I hate people say, well, you got to do this or that. No. If you can do all four, then you're winning. But if you got a bootstrap, let's say your cost structure is too high, then guess what? It's time to figure out some other strategies. Existing, uh, amazing insight, Victor. 
As always, Vic, thank you very much. Christopher, thank you for joining me. Inkle John, what's happening? Great insight as always, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you, man. I know you guys are taking your time out of your evening or day to come hang out. Victor, what a great way to kick off the new year, sales strategies and tactics. I'm liking the book. Like I said, I really tried to, CF, when I was writing this book, I really tried to, and when you go through the book, you'll see, there's not a lot of fluff in there. I try to include strategies. Wait till I get to chapter 16 on phrases and why. There's like 20 different ways to start, you know, have a upselling conversation. But bottom line, I really try to pack it with just pure strategies. Not a lot of stories. So if you want a lot of stories, this ain't your book. Uh, Camlish, thanks for Sales After Dark last year and followed this process and got super positive results. Thank you, man. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, send me, send me a small commission of whatever you made. Just kidding. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, never knew upselling is so impactful. The book is a must read. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Ace Bedick, I think you're back. Nice that you're back. Nice to be back. I should look, I took last year off, I think, uh, because I really wanted to, like, you know how sometimes you have to unplug from the matrix? I think I needed to unplug from the matrix. And like some of the new content I got coming is so different. And so I think it has a wider breadth that I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So this is going to be a good year for Sales After Dark. So I might actually do a midday show called Sales After Noon. Uh, midday, so I can probably hit more of my international folks. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. Your voice and energy are amazing. Thank you, man. I don't think so, but thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, one on Audible. Ace said Audible. Arvin says Audible. You guys are going to make me go into the booth, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I, well, I've got a lot of ones here. Jennifer's even in the room. Yeah, you guys, well, yeah, you guys really want the audio, huh? Man. Now, the, now the, the, the interesting thing is that the the book has a lot of uh, like equations and formulas, because I wanted you to be able to calculate the, um, you know, like the different ratios, the different numbers, so you can see the impact of upselling. Uh, for example, when I talk, there's a Starbucks example in there where I talk about customer acquisition costs and customer lifetime value. So you guys got me thinking that if I do do it in audio, how does formulas or equations or, you know, ma little math, how do I do that? But I'm sure I can figure it out. Uh, Inko Johnson, love your voice, man. Thank you, man. I'm like, oh, my God, it's, a, it's an all right voice. Uh, Mayan R, one great voice. Thank you very much. Hard copy. Nate Turner, you're back, man. Ahmed Noor, I am late for the party. Yes, you are, but you can always watch it on the preview. I was waiting on the 7 p.m. live segment. Sorry about that. I'm going to do it at 8 p.m. Eastern time, New York time. Uh, so we'll get it together. We'll, we'll connect, Ahmed. We'll connect. Uh, is upselling strategy that all salespeople should focus on throughout the year? I think so. I mean, why not? I mean, I think upsell, look, upselling should be like the lazy salesperson's strategy. <laughs> you know, the lazy salesperson, instead of going out and getting new business, you know, if you just don't feel like prospecting one week, let's go do some upselling. And I say that jokingly tongue, tongue in cheek because you still have to prospect, right? But if you're, if you're saying to yourself, you know what, I'm having a hard time prospecting, why not dedicate some of your prospecting time to upselling, following up with customers, figuring out uh, you know different ways, different products to sell them? In one of the chapters, I actually talk about creating an upselling map, a roadmap. By that, I mean if I sold you A, like if I sold you this right here, people who buy this typically buy this, this, and this. You ever see like Amazon? People who bought this book also bought this, this, and this. And I talk about how what salespeople need sometimes, Mike, is they need a, uh, it's like an upselling roadmap. Like, what do I sell them next? Now, um, I give you the Amazon example, but that's pretty simple, right? People who bought this book also bought this book. But think about, like, say, for technology, an enterprise company, right? People who bought certain cloud services might also buy other complex products or combination thereof. And if we can create an upselling roadmap for salespeople, they now know what to upsell. And then think about putting this into your your cadence, your outreach program, right? I've sold you this. How do we begin to create a cadence or an outreach program through our email system, our funnels, whatever it may be, to actually get people to buy? So that's also in the book, and I touch on that. So um, Mia, if you are to prioritize three categories like invoice amount, profit amount, gross profit, which one is more important than the other? Oh, that's such a good question. It's a hard question because, you know, you, you got to look at your cost structure, right? So 
Invoice amount is top line, right? What's coming in, right? And then if you take out your, your cost, you get gross profit, but then if you take out EBITDA, taxes and all that stuff, you get down to your actual profit. And so they're all important. So I don't know if I, if I were to prioritize one, I would say invoice amount, right? Because if it's coming in, I mean, I'll try to keep my cost down, but I got to keep the money flowing in. My revenues has to continue to grow my top line. So I'll, I'll use invoice amount as top line. So if you ask me what's more important, top line tells me how fast the business is growing. If my profit margins or my gross profit margins are not where I want them to be, that tells me my cost structure is off. So I can go back and look at my cost structure. I think it's easier to tweak your cost structure to get your profit or gross profit margin to where you want it versus going out and grabbing new business or upselling and grabbing more business on the top line. So I think top line is harder to generate. So I would focus on the top line, which would be the invoice amount. Let me know if that answers your question. That's how I would look at it. I'm starting a sales agency from the ground up. I'm trying to learn as much as possible. Good for you, man. Hang out with me every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, great content. And if, you're not, if you haven't joined the Sales Velocity Academy, go to salesvelocityacademy.com. Again, the courses, we've had a lot of new courses. We got some really good ones coming this year. So I think it's worth the investment. Uh, what mix would you focus on? Referral versus new. Good question, man. That's a really good question. Now, you got me thinking because there's two ways. The easy answer would be, oh, just split your time between both. But let's think about this. Let's think about this because there's a lot of variables in play. One is how long it does it take you to acquire a new client, right? So that's a variable that we have to consider. The second variable we have to consider is what is the average deal size? So, for example, if I know that acquiring a new client, I can get a big deal, but if I just do upselling, I can only get a small deal. Well, obviously, I'm going to try to focus on the big deal. So I would put those two things in play. What's the time to acquire a new client? In other words, what does it take to get a new client? And then look at the actual amount. Now, let's assume that through upselling or prospecting, getting new clients, I can make as much money. Well, if I can do as much, you know, a new client versus upselling, I can have the same amount of revenue. I'm going for the upselling. Because trying to acquire somebody, as I just mentioned, sales cycle is going to be shorter if you do upselling. Easier access if it's upselling. So it depends what you're upselling. Again, if you're upselling something small, not a high value product, then I'd say acquiring a new client for a bigger deal is where I would focus my time. And then I would try to balance the equation that way. But I think if I may suggest, if I may suggest, there's times during the day when you're just like, cranking, right? Like my, for me, morning is my, 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 my zone, right? And so what I would do is I would focus all my energy because I need the best energy, best of the best energy to do the cold calling, the outreach, trying to connect with people, right? But then let's say as, as Daniel Pink wrote in his book, when that after like one or two o'clock, you begin to hit that dip, right? You like, you start your, your, your circadian rhythm, your energy level goes down. Maybe as your energy level sinks, let's say from two to four or five o'clock, maybe two to four, why don't you use that effort to say, you know what, two to four, I'm not high energy, you know, I just wanna get, I wanna do something easy, then maybe that would be the time to say, you know what, maybe in the afternoon is when I'll do the, the outreach to my existing customers and do some proposals as far as upselling. That's kind of how I would do it. But again, there's so many ways to kind of cut that cake. Let me know what you think of that, Christopher. Uh, Ace, do you have any great ways to get existing customers to refer you? Uh, one, I mean, I'll give you the, I'm not, I'm not trying to be flippant or smart here, a smart ass, but it's like, you know, one is to simply ask them, but I would make sure that I've, I've serviced the hell out of my customers, right? Make sure I service the hell out of them that they're going, I like this guy. I love the company. I love what they do for them, uh, do for us. The other thing is, we can have that conversation. I don't think it's hard to have a conversation with the customer if you've really done a great job. Like, let's say you were my customer, Ace. You know, you went through the Sales Velocity Academy, you killed it, you're selling well, and I, I would simply say, Ace, I'm glad to see that you're having the results you're having with the Sales Velocity Academy. I would love other companies to have that same experience. Could you recommend one or two people, one or two companies that you think could benefit from my program? That's one way of doing it, right? Just say, just give it to me. You know, and you see how I set that up? It's like, I'm glad 
you've enjoyed it, you've benefited from. Can you think of anybody else in your space? And then you've got to be very specific. Don't just say, can you think of anybody else? You say something like this. Ace, can you think about anybody else who's in your position, who's a salesperson, who's also struggling, who has to sell technology product or B2C product, so forth and so on. Can you, does anybody come to mind? And you'll probably say, yeah, a couple of people come to mind. Do you mind if, I, if you pass out that information to me so I can you know, reach out to them? Or could you just do an email introduction? I can write the, the small email introduction for you. I'll send you that. Can you just do me a simple introduction? So there's two ways of doing it. Give me the information, I'll contact them, or introduce me via email. That's two ways of doing it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Uh, ways to start an upselling conversation. Yes. Uh, you said 21 chapter 16. Yeah, chapter 16 is 20 ways to start an upselling conversation. And I got some great examples in there because sometimes it's hard to start that upselling conversation. So that book, and like I said, we'll go through some of that. But yeah, that's I'm telling you, that's a really powerful chapter. So thank you for bringing it up again. Kent Carlisle is back. Uh, look forward to reading Mastering the Upsell. Okay. Make it a great 2022, Matt. Jose C. Flores, uh, video collaboration advisor. Who is the best in class sales force doing upselling strategies right now? I have no idea, Jose. How's that? Uh, I think if you ask me who's best in class, Amazon, because uh, you can see it, right? And so it's always it's a hard question to ask because you got to look at what companies are actually doing. But I think if you look at what Amazon does, through their upselling process, they're constantly upselling. And people who bought this also bought this. They're using AI recommendation engines to do that. And if we can find a way to mimic that within our sales team, and I want, I'd ask you the question, Jose, how many sales training, you know, and by the way, if you're part of a company, how many times did you go to some, you know, event, right? Uh, Pre-COVID, right? You went to an event and they taught you about the products, they talked about marketing, they, and then they talked about sales training, right? They, how to sell the products. How many times have you been to an upselling training? Let me know. One, if you've been to an upselling training, hit me with a zero if you've never been to an upselling training, because I've never been to an upselling training, which is why I wrote the book. Great question, man. That's the best I can do for you. Audiobook is definitely something you should consider, even if you outsource the voice. I did that. I did that one time. Uh, I forgot which book was it. I forgot which book I did that for, and I gotta go back and look at it. I think it was Cold Calling Success. I did it for Cold Calling Success, and I got so criticized for that. A lot of haters on that one, because they, they wanted to hear my voice, right? And, but I did make a mistake. I, I chose a guy who, who was so, he was like had a Southern accent, so if I do choose somebody else, I'll make sure they kinda sound like me. By the way, wouldn't it be great if there was like this, uh, like this, if you speak, right, let's say this is your voice speaking, right, that's your voice, you can create a Victor box, a Victor Antonio box, and it will sound just like me. That would be the ideal situation, right? If they can just take my voice. I'm sure they're getting close to doing that, but that would be great, man. Uh, anyway, thank you for the question. Victor, I was just sharing this with someone today about shortening my sales cycle. I've been focusing on who's already in the door. Timely confirmation, I'm on task, we'll have to order the book. I'm telling you. They're there already. They know you. You have the relationship. Why don't we sell more to them? So great point. Get CA. You have a great voice. Do the audio. It's for us, not you. <laughs> Get I like you. I think I like you already. You're awesome. It's not for you, Victor. Stop being so self-centered. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jay, sales after dark time is perfect for us. International folks, sales afternoon will be midnight for us. Ha ha, okay, maybe not. Okay, maybe I have to kill that idea. Uh, Kai Cruz says, nice if available on audio. Wow, interesting. My man, Doug Lehman, breaking it down for me in layman's terms. Happy New Year to you, Doug. Look forward to seeing you soon, man. Uh, the lazy salesperson strategy. My copywriter brain loves the phrase. I'm telling you, it's, it's a lazy way of selling if you don't want to go out and get new people. Um, I'm looking forward for your two to three year plan that we'll, you'll share. Yeah, I'm, I'll walk you through that if you guys really want to hear that. I mean, it's like, I think, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a preview of what happened last year. Nothing bad, by the way. Nothing bad. It was, it was a good year. It was a great year, actually. And, but, like, when I unplugged from the matrix, it was like I had to reevaluate my, my trajectory. And some of the things I discovered 
as I wandered through the desert of my mind, which is scary, uh, I think you might, you, many of you will relate. You'll probably go, oh, that's what you go through. Uh, but it was, it was, it was terrifying and, and exciting at the same time. Terrifying because you don't know where you want to go, right? You, got, got, you want to do something different. And then at the same time, it's exciting because you're going to be doing something different. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but let me ask, let me phrase the question to you this way. Have you ever done something and you've done it for so long, you don't want to give it up, but you know you should be doing something else and you want to do something bigger and different? If you can understand that question, that's kind of what I went through. And I'll show you some of the things I, I did to actually solve the puzzle for me. So it made sense. So. Uh, yeah, look forward to having that one also. Great to see a lot of sales after Dark Tribe. Yeah, the tribe is back. A prosperous 22 for all. Thank you, man. Very nice of you, Ken. Thank you. My girl, Mia Knox. Makes sense. Thank you. Ahmed Noor. So happy to have sales after Dark back. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for being around again. I appreciate my tribe. Uh, hi, and thank you for all the amazing content. Any recommendation on books that cover insurance sales? Off the top of my head, no. Let me give that some thought because I've read a couple of good books, uh, but I'm trying, I got, I got to give it some thought, Ashraf. Uh, nothing comes to mind and I don't want to just say something. Uh, if something comes to mind, I'll put it on the next podcast or I'll put it in my newsletter. So sorry about that. The sales experts, experts, amazing as always, Victor. Thank you, Wally, man. Thank you for joining us. Miguel A. De Jesus, excellent recommendation. Thank you very much for joining. Ahmed said zero, uh, zero, zero, Mia Knox. Okay, Chris, uh, let me see what we got here. Paging, pre, pre yeah, where are those two guys at? They're always on there. They're just out here. So, Ramesh, hello, Antonio. We all have a voice stamp. I'm not even going to argue with you because I know you're right. I know you're right. I know you're right. Uh, hi, Victor. Ted Candy, again, how about if upselling could not work because we already fulfill customers' demand in a particular product? Any other strategy? Thanks. That's a good one. Oh, I, I, let me throw some kind of brainstorm with you. So I had this problem in the past. I've had this problem in the past where you sell your product and you're like, what else can I sell? This is where you should consider, Ted, actually partnering with companies that sell, I'll say, an adjacent product. You often hear uh, the phrase adjacency. An adjacent product is... Uh, it's kind of what it means. I don't mean to be obvious about this, but here's your product space, right? So you're selling that product right there, but there's other people that sell products that can complement, uh, sorry about this marker thing here, that, you know, this will be P1 and P2. This is your product. We'll call that P0. So you can find, if you can find partners who have products that complement and work out some type of agreement or maybe even a reseller agreement. So for example, it could be an affiliate program if you want something simple. It could be a referral program, right? And you gotta find ways of tracking this. Or it can be a reseller program. In other words, you take this product and what we did is we, we asked it to be OEM'd or white labeled. Uh, by white label, I mean is that if they sold us, I'm trying to find a little box here. You know, if they sold remote controls, we sold TVs, they sold remote controls. So what we would say to them is, hey, sell us the remote control a little bit above cost because they have to make money. And then we would take the name off the remote control and put our company name on it. And now we sold it as part of our package. And you can do this. You can partner with several companies, trustworthy companies, and do a white label type of resale agreement. Let me know what you think of that, if that strategy would work. I don't know what you're selling, but let me know what you think of that. Ramesh, happy new year to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Gitsy uh, made the best point in doing the audio version. I can't argue with her, she's right. Uh, Ashraf, you're welcome. Uh, Christopher, where do I sign up for the newsletter? If you go to my website, uh, just go in there. You, there should be a newsletter. Just go to victorantonio.com. So victorantonio.com. There should be something for the newsletter in there. Uh, should be great. Your insight is absolute gold. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. And uh, Ted Candy, not sure if this helps, but ask the question, what new demand slash problem does my product create after my customer bought it? Think that way and then find products that would actually solve that. I'm telling you, it's a great way of upselling uh, selling more products without having the responsibility of actually manufacturing. By the way, if you don't want to resell it, you can also arrange a drop shipping situation where you'll take the order, right? You'll send them 
their payment, right? And then they'll do the drop shipping directly. I'd rather it come through my company like that. I can control what lands, when it lands, and I can keep track of everything. So on that note, folks, I am out of here. Thank you so much. Again, I'll see you guys on Thursday. And I don't think, I think that was it. Uh, like I said, I'll cover more content. What I'm covering next time, uh, if I can bore you with this, uh, we're going to talk about freemium and multiple options. I've talked about this in the past, but I'm going to start there. And I'm again, I'm going to go through the whole table of content, all the content that's in there. Uh, if My suggestion is get the book and then use it as a guide. So as I'm going through it, uh, maybe you can read ahead. If you read ahead, then I think you'll benefit more from Sales After Dark as we go through the book. And on that note, I think I got nothing else. We will see you on Thursday. Take care, guys. We'll see you.